Bentley Continental GT has been with us for over 12 years now and it's been a vitally important car to Bentley. It now makes up over half of its sales and it's completely transformed the way we see the brand. For decades and decades it was at the pinnacle of comfort and luxury and that's still the case now but when you look at the Continental GT it just, it just has that hint of madness in its eyes. Now I've gone on and on about the Continental, how much I like it and how important I think it is to Bentley's future. And there's plenty of films about that on X-Car if you're interested. But today we're driving the new facelifted second generation Continental. There's been a few exterior tweaks to the styling and some new options that are available. So here's a rundown of everything that's new on the facelifted Continental GT. Up front there's a new bumper, smaller radiator shell and new fenders. The Continental GT was already the bad boy in the Bentley lineup, but these tweaks certainly add an extra bit of snarl to the overall package. The more sculpted look is a welcome departure from the last Continental GT and a huge leap forward from the now dated looking original from 2003. There's a new B detail on the side which sets up the enhanced strong power line that pulls the eye towards the rear of the car and breaks up the profile contributing to its more purposeful stance. The rear has also received an update with a boot lid featuring a slight lip removing the traditional rounded continental backside and gives the car more of a mini spoiler feel. The rear bumper has also been updated as has the rear diffuser. Also as a first for the Continental, these directional 5-spoke wheels are available in addition to a raft of other 20 and 21 inch options. One of the only things I've ever complained about on the Continental GT were the paddle shifters. I always thought they were too high up and they had this horrible plasticky feel that didn't seem at home in the Bentley. In the new facelifted model, however, that's been addressed. They now have this wonderful knurled metal feeling, similar to how you get on the gear shifter down here, and it gives this wonderful tactile approach. They're also slightly larger and lower down, so you can actually grab them from a quarter to three driving position, which is exactly where you need them when you're throwing it about. And of course the interior is still that top, top level of quality design and artisan craftsmanship from some of the most talented men and women in the industry. The Continental has won as many fans as it has detractors over the years, but with these changes, in my opinion at least, it is the best looking Continental GT to date. And that's it, that's how to spot the new facelifted Continental GT. And of course that's all wrapped around an incredible V8, or in this case, an amazing W12 engine connected to an 8-speed ZF gearbox, which just so happens to be my favorite combination of engine and gearbox in the world. But for those of you who watch X-Car quite a lot, you'd have known that already. The Continental has been with us for a long time now, and I don't know how long we'll have it left with us. But while it's still out there, available to drive, I beg you to absolutely try and do whatever you can to get behind the wheel. It is one of the best driving experiences available and hands down the best GT car Britain has to offer.